on this uh, Roman study, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And as you're turning, read a couple verses here, 2 Timothy chapter 3, <coughs> verse number 14 and 15, I think is where I want to be at. I'm turning there myself. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's read verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's be seated about a pray. Father, Bless your words today. Lord, help us and uh, be reminded of how important uh, the Scripture is and um, how imperative it is for us to share it. Lord, thank you for everything that you do, everything you've done, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> this morning, um, we were getting ready, and we were talking about, uh, so me and Elliot was in the, uh, the room there, and, and I can't remember how we got on the topic about heaven and, and uh, seeing God. He said, I want to see God. And I said, well, we all will and you will because you've got Jesus in your heart. I said, but the whole world's going to see God because everyone's going to stand in front of him. And he said, everyone? I said, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they all go to heaven because um, only through Jesus. And he said, you mean the other place and the devil? And I said, yeah, we're just, we're just talking. And, and uh, I said, but if you have Jesus as your savior, that's the way to get access to God. And he's like, well, we got to tell them all. we got to tell everybody. And I, I said, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, we, we've got it, but we can't make everyone uh, get saved. And we were talking about purpose today. And, and uh, what's purpose mean? I mean, oh, there's a, there's a good Bible lesson there in the bathroom getting ready for uh, the day. And so, uh, boy, we got to tell everybody. And why wouldn't we tell everybody? Uh, some people don't understand or just don't have a clear um, explanation of what it means. Now, how many of you got saved when you were kids? Raise your hand. How many got saved as adult? Ah, about half and half, really. Uh, I, uh, and that's, that's neat because usually the older the Baptist church gets, the younger the, uh, the salvation of when they got saved happens. Uh, they say, I've heard a, a statistic of a really high percent get saved before the age of 8 or 9 or 10 years old. And, and that, that's, that's my testimony. From a child, look at verse 15. And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The recipe is always the same. Through faith. In Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's always a belief and a trust and an acknowledgement and an acceptance. You can use all those words kind of, kind of uh, not interchangeably, but all describing the same process. And we get this knowledge and this wisdom from the scripture. <clears throat> so if you're wanting to witness to someone, you're wanting to help someone get saved, the scripture has got to be a part of it. We have these uh, handy dandy little scripture pages, and they got a nice little logo on the front, and they got a wonderful picture of a family inside. I'm just teasing there. That's uh, uh, Taryn. Taryn told me, "Dad, you got the old picture of you still on the website." And I didn't know that, but we got to fix that on one of the uh, the staff pictures. She was trying to sign up for the Faith Life group on her phone that she's so excited about, and so she was trying to go through that. And uh, uh, and, and anyway. On the inside of this are four references, or actually six references, but four steps of Scripture to lead someone to Jesus. <clears throat> it, it has to be simple enough that a child can get it. Look at the verse. And that from a child thou hast known the holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It's got to be simple enough that a child 
can understand it. Because, are you ready for this? Go to Luke chapter 18. Excuse me, Luke chapter 18. Verse number 15. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a what? Shall in no wise enter in. Now we love to quote John 14, 6. Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and, and uh, no man can come to the Father but by him. This verse says, no wise enter therein unless you come as a little child. So I don't think that we have to complicate the plan of salvation to make it be intricate and um, um, uh, obtrusive and, and so far explained that only a Ph.D. or somebody that's uh, a red Greek and Hebrew can get saved. <clears throat> it's got to be as simple that a child can get it and can be saved. And so here is the plan that I would like for you guys to use if you're coming Saturday. You ready? When, uh, when we are standing out in the lobby and families start entering in, they're going to come in and we're going to have, I'll be standing there and, and the secretary or somebody, uh, uh, they'll be writing down, whoever's there with me, uh, will be writing down getting their name and how many kids and we'll have a page and we'll have a number to give them so we can draw to see, you know, what order they get to go shopping. And once that family gets signed in, I'm going to say, hey, Bill, can you take this family and help get some information? And Bill said, oh, yes, thank you. And so I'm asking you, hey, bring a mask with you, because if that family uh, would, it would like to talk with someone with a mask, I think that that would be very much appropriate. We're trying to serve them. Amen. I went on a visit Monday night. And I uh, walked in the house, and uh, the person had a mask. I said, I got one. He said, oh, that'd be great. I put it on, and we talked and visited, and uh, no problem. I, I don't, I don't uh, uh, wear it when I preach, and I don't wear it much other places, but that's my decision. But I will definitely try to be um, appeasing to anywhere that I'm trying to minister to. You all say amen to that? Amen. So you do that. And maybe they say, oh, that's okay. Oh, great. Let's go talk. And so we're going to come in, and then you're going to have a little form just to get some general information. And as you go through that information, there's going to be a couple leading questions. And uh, one of them, do you have a church you go to? Oh, yes, so-and-so, I go there. Great, just wanted to you know, know if we need to offer you some ministry services and things like that. But then finally, whenever you get through all that stuff, you can pull out one of these tracks and say, this is the gifts of the gospel. And we just want to make sure you understand what the gospel is. And so the gospel is the story of what Jesus did for you. And you can use any pattern to witness from, but here's what I would use, okay? I'm going to make it as simple as possible, and I'm going to tell them, I'm going to say, you know, the Bible says that there's none righteous, no, not one. And because there's none righteous, and for all have sinned, God did something for us. He loved us so much, He did not want to leave us end our sin, and to be exempt and put away from him for eternity. So the Bible tells us that sin brings death. And uh, I've, I've said this a thousand times, and I've been using it a lot more lately with the uh, COVID stuff going on. And I'll say, you know the death rate of humans is 100%. It's not 2%. It's not 3%. It's not 1.8. It's 100%. And it's because of the curse of sin, we all are going to die. And the Bible says, for the wage of sin is death. But here's the gift that God offers. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins. Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, the gift of the gospel is that Jesus was born, and everyone loves babies, and that's the beginning of the gospel story. Jesus was born, and it's the greatest gift ever given to mankind. Can you all say amen? 
And that's how we, and, and that's, I think that's why we practice giving gifts to everyone else at Christmas time. Now, you know, my kids, they like gifts any time of the year. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They think every time you go to a store, they ought to get a gift of some kind. And then we'll do that from time to time. But Christmas time, there's an extra reason for the gift. And before we open them up, we talk about what Jesus did and what God gave us. And so you talk to this family and say, hey, I just want to let, make sure you know that this is why we give out gifts. And people have given all these things not just, just out of the goodness of their heart so that I could share with you this truth. That God loves us so much that he allowed Jesus to come and die for us. The fact that he had to die for us shows you there's something that he had to do that you could not do. Now, I, I use this thought sometimes, and sometimes I don't, but as you're talking, here's the thought. If God could have just came and taught you, he wouldn't have had to die. If God could have came and just showed you he loved you, he wouldn't have had to die. I, I've not had to die yet to show my wife I love her. I'm still living. Y'all say amen, thank you. I love my wife, and I would be willing to die for her, but I have not been asked to die for my wife yet. She's wanted me to die a couple times, I think, in the process, but... Uh, <clears throat> You don't have to die to show someone you love them. So why did Christ die? Because that is something that he had to do in order for his love to be received. And so here's the plan. God would take your sin death for you, and that's the gift he offers to everyone. We're all related. We're all from Arkansas. Okay, We're all related, and uh, we all can accept that gift. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here's the recipe. You really have to believe that Jesus died and rose again. You've got to really admit that you need him. And then you've got to get to the reality that you can call upon him and you can ask him by faith. I'll, Jesus is not in the next room to come and introduce himself to you. He's in his word, and he is introducing himself to you. And that's the gift with the gospel. And so when I got saved, watch. When you go through the plan of salvation with someone, and you've talked about this stuff, there's always this uneasy moment of, <clears throat> okay, I've told them everything. Now I just got to, what, what do we do? Well, let's jump in. How do you, let's do it. What do you say or what do you do to help a child go ahead and accept what you're offering him. This is what I would do. I remember, I would say this, I remember when I got saved. I remember a man led me in a prayer and gave me some words to repeat of how I could accept Christ as my Savior. There's no magic words, and there is no, but I tell you, Jesus said uh, if, if, uh, uh, to the thief on the cross, uh, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Remember that? Yep. And he said, Lord, help me, right? Yep. He just called out to the Lord. That when, when you give someone the opportunity and access and just a little bit of showing, then it's their decision. But if you don't show and you don't tell, you don't do anything, well, how, okay, I heard about it. What do I do with it? Uh, I don't know what to do with it. So I tell them, here's how I accepted that gift with the gospel. I prayed with a man who prayed with me and I called him the Lord, and I asked the Lord to come and save my soul. If I would pray with us right now, and you don't have to do it to, uh, to go further in the program. This is just our part to make an invitation to you. If I would lead you in prayer, would you be willing to pray with me and ask the Lord to save you? They might say, well, I've already done that. Great. Wonderful. When did you do that? Well, I was baptized back when I was, hey, you know what? That's awesome. But I was baptized too. I made sure I called the Lord. That's what you do. And uh, you can't make someone, you can't twist their arm. Well, I think I went to church. Hey, would you like, if I prayed, would you pray with me? I, I'm not going to ask every 1,500 questions because really it's not my business if they get saved when I talk with them. It's between them and God. You all say amen to that? Yeah. But I'm going to let them know the scriptures and I'm going to give them an the opportunity that if I would lead them in prayer, if they'd like to pray with me, they would pray. And then I'll say, hey, let's just do it together. And I'll pray, and then at, at the end, just pray with me. And I've, I've started doing that so I could pray a little bit of explanation if I think I've missed something. And in my prayer, I might say this, Lord, thank you for so-and-so that's here with me today. 
And Lord, I know we just met and we just talked a few minutes. And Lord, I know that uh, this is a big decision. They might not understand everything, but they said they were willing to pray. And so I'm just asking you, give them understanding, give them courage. And I'll just pray something like that and I'll say, and Lord, thank you for this opportunity. And then I'll look up and say, just pray with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, and I'll lead them in a prayer. If you get nervous, there's one on the track. And you can talk through them and talk through it. And I would lead them in prayer so they could repeat and ask the Lord Jesus to come into their soul, and come and save their soul. That's a great way, okay? The other way I've been using, and you can use either one you want, whatever you're comfortable with sharing, but this one has been my, I use the white robe story a lot, and people have said, preacher, you keep talking about that, and I don't even know what it is. It's an illustration, but I've been using the gift card. I've been using the gift card more than anything else, and uh, if, if I talk to them about gifts of the gospel and I go through the verses of the track, I'll say, let me, let me explain it to you this way. God paid for all the world's sin 2,000 years ago. And when he paid for it, the gift is through Jesus Christ. So it's like this gift card. I got one for Aldi, $15, or $5 it says. Boy, how did I get a $5? Maybe it's $15. I don't know. Anyway, I got a marker on the outside of it. It's a $5 card. I'm not getting much at all. Maybe it's $15. So I would say, Bill, this is what God did. God paid for your sin. It's like a gift card. And if God gives you this gift card, and he put all, of, uh, and this gift card is $15 for Aldi, okay? Let's just pretend like this is a, an illustration. <clears throat> when do you get the benefit of that card? When, I take it to the when you go to Aldi's. What happens if you go to Walmart and try to use that card? You can go to White Castle and it won't work. You can go to, to Myers. It, it'll only work because I gave the card and I put the money on it and it's only for this specific place. What God did was he paid for all of your sin and he put it up through Jesus. And the only way to get the benefit of what God paid for, the payment of your sins, is when you take his gift and you swipe it at the Jesus store and you accept Christ and then all of that he paid for you get the benefit of it and you get to use what he paid for and that is your sin and so that's what salvation is it's you realizing that I've got this card of sin and I'm got to pay for it if you pay for it you're going to hell that's the payment but God gave you a son Jesus so that you don't have to go and pay that payment Jesus took your sin on the cross and died the death, lived a perfect life so he could take it. And if you'll accept Christ and you'll just believe that he died and rose again, that will pay for your sin. And so I've been using that. I think that everyone in our culture knows what a gift card is. Y'all say amen to that? Somebody's had a gift card to somewhere. And you know that if you leave it in your wallet like I've done, and then you don't get no benefit for it. It's stuck there, and someone paid, and I don't get any benefit because I kept forgetting. Hey, a lot of people have forgotten what God's done for them. And I'm excited. We get to share it again. Show it one more time. Before the end of this wonderful year of 2020, we can tell someone about Jesus. So if you, you use a gift card illustration, just use a simple track they will listen Saturday because there's a reason they came. And we're not trying to manipulate, but we're not going to miss the opportunity. Can I tell you how excited I am that a farm show is going to happen in Louisville, Kentucky? The big farm show. They moved it back to the end of March, but then they're going to have less people, but we are going to get to pass out some walking sticks. It's been a long time since we've done that. I'm excited to get to share the gospel uh, on any more open basis. This Saturday, hey, if you don't come, that's okay. If you can't come, understand. Would you all pray Saturday morning yeah. around 10 o'clock? Start 9.30, 9.45. If you can't come, mark your, mark your alarm, set your count. Hey, let's pray for the families that come in that somebody can get saved. Before we close, any question that you have about trying to share the gospel with someone else? Anybody have a question? Anyone can do it. You don't have to do it Saturday. You can do it truck stops. That's Jimmy's led some people, Lord, truck stop. He'd give me a call. Preacher, I got me one. Uh, you can lead somebody to the Lord at, at, uh, at the airport, at stores, at, at, on the job. Tim Hortons. 
at, at White Castle, Burger King, anywhere. You can, you can share the gospel with somebody. So any questions? It's good. Man, it's good. Elliot said, we got to tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, we got to tell everyone. And I hope that you all catch that same burden. We got to tell everyone. I don't want anyone not to know of what God's done for them. Amen? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunities that you will give us if we're intent on sharing and showing the love of Christ through the gospel story. God, you showed it so wonderfully and so purposefully and perfectly by the death of Jesus and the resurrection of him. And God, you've given us that record and that reminder and that reason to, um, 